Hey everyone, today we're going to go for the Not On My Watch trophy in MLB The Show 20. This was the best result after three hours of trying this, where I threw perfectly home and my catcher just stood there. So, we're going to do this a different way. I learned a lot. Now, some of this goes to the credit of uh, it's NAPJCJD Gaming, also on YouTube, that uh, has a method for doing this trophy. I did learn a few things along the way that if you follow, you will save several hours of wanting to just pull your hair out. The first thing you're going to do is go into user settings and make sure that you have the proper settings in order to get the trophy. So I made sure to change items to veteran only because uh, hope, hoping now I'm just saying this is hitting difficulty but uh, if you change it past rookie and beginner that you'll get the base runners to run on you more often than not so uh, changing everything to veteran and make sure you have button accuracy that is the setting that you want as far as throwing the ball it's going to look like a gas gauge and if you're throwing home, a home plate icon will appear. And if you stop it correctly right on that home plate button, the controller will vibrate and you can get your, your perfect throw. So it's like smack dab in the middle of your, your gas meter. The next item to adjust are the sliders. Just have a human maxed out a CPU. I was playing around with something else, so I'm going to make sure that it's kind of smack dab in the middle of everything. Solid hits, stamina, you know, etc. all the way down. The important slider to ensure that you have maxed out or bottomed out, depending on, on which one you're going to, are Billionaires outfield, you want to take that away. You do not want your outfielders dropping the ball when you don't want them to. Also, throwing the ball in air, you want to take that away. The run speed, you want to max out to make sure you can get to that ball and max out the reaction and the run strength. This gives you the best possible scenario. Now, when it comes to base running, you want to you want to drop that down all the way to zero as well because you want the players to run as slow as possible. Uh, one adjustment that next you're going to go into editing players. You're going to find the team that you want to play as, and you're going to find your outfielders, your left, your center, and your right fielder, and you're going to edit their stats to max. Now you can find them any way you want, depending on the team. Uh, make sure that you are picking the player that is going to be starting. Uh, if not, then you can change change the roster to make sure that not only are they in the major league, but also that they're at the top of the, to the depth chart and are playing. So. Uh, Primarily what we want to make sure is anything feel like we don't care about batting, so speed, arm strength, accuracy, reaction time, fielding ability, we're going to max all that out. So again, batting and ceiling and base running aren't important because we can lose this game 50 to 0 and it does not matter because you're only going for the trophy for throwing them perfectly out at home. So again, moving on to the center fielder, doing the exact same thing, maxing items out, 98, 99, probably no difference, but I don't want that 98 to cause an error, and that 97 to cause an error that doesn't let me get the trophy, and I potentially just wasted hours and hours and hours. So one more to edit. Again, same items, just the 
fielding items, not caring about any other stats. We can have a zero speed, base running zero, doesn't matter. We won't be batting, we don't care. We're just fielding. So make sure you just max out everything fielding, especially speed. We want these players to be absolutely fast. We don't want a ball to drop in between center and right, for instance, and neither player is fast enough to get there. So the next step after this, is we're going to go to the team that technically will be winning the game because you're going to be walking a lot of people and uh, playing around with the team that the CPU is going to control. It really doesn't matter which team you pick uh, because you're going to be changing only one stat on these players. Uh, but for argument's sake, it's the, it's the Houston Astros. So the stat that we're going to change on every starter on the CPU team is we're going to change base running aggressiveness. Now, I went in and changed base running aggressiveness and dropped their speed to zero. You do not want to do that. So my problem with dropping their speed to zero was, and again, this had me spend several, several hours learning this, is uh, if they have zero speed, they're not as uh, excited to, to run and take home plate. Home plate. So, they will stop on third and stay there. So leave their speed alone. Just let them do what they're going to do. You'll just go in again to everyone that's a starter. Don't worry about the pitcher. Who cares about them? But everyone that's a starter and edit them. I need to actually edit them. Edit the player. There are their attributes. Very bottom item. Base rank aggressiveness. Just take it all the way up to 99. And that's the only thing you need to change on the other team. So doing it this way will speed up a lot of time and frustration of why you had a great catch in left field, close to the wall that gives enough time, and your CPU-controlled base runner does not run from third to home. And you don't know why, because in a normal game, they would go. So you can leave speed alone base running aggressiveness all the way up to 99. So we're going to continue to do this through the whole starting roster of the CPU, CPU controlled team. Right, speeding this up because you get the, the point as we go through and just maximize the base running aggressiveness stat for the opposing team. So the next item of business that we're going to have to go and focus on is the roster. There's people that are on AAA teams that shouldn't be. Not sure why the rosters are like this. So uh, you want to auto-fix the rosters. Now you're ready to play the game. So make sure that you are playing CPU on the away team and you are playing the home team. The reason this is it allows you to fast forward much easier by taking away big chunks of innings. Springer. And so here in the game, we're going to go over to quick manage. We're going to walk the first three batters, and that's when we're going to get our opportunity to get a fly ball that we can catch with our outfielder and hopefully make a perfect throw home. Now again, as the gauge comes up, you saw the home plate appear briefly disappeared. I had a horrible throw. Please don't judge me. Uh, someone scored. Again, winning the game matters nothing. They did score the person from home. Go back into quick manage. I'm going to walk someone automatically. And there we go. You do not need to... Operate. Hold on. You do not need to... L1 and I think it's circle to watch the animation of your manager hold up his hand saying, hey, we're going to walk someone. You can just go into the quick manage and walk people to load the bases. Uh, I'm honestly not sure if you can run a shortstop or second baseman into the outfield and throw and if it has to be an actual outfielder, but uh, I attempt to it every time. 
That looked to be a perfect throw, however, there's no home plate. The person is running home, but the throw is too slow, which is potentially why the home plate never appeared. So now I have two outs, and this is why it's important to be the home team, because you're going to quick manage and fast forward to the second inning. Now here you are in the second inning, you have to exit out, go back into quick manage, and you can start the process all over again and walk three batters. Now all I'm doing for my pitcher is pitching fastballs right down the plate. You're going to have a lot of home runs hit on you, like this. Uh, you're going to have some really solid throws, but that's the best scenario for them to hit it to the outfield. Um, you don't need to worry about pitching low, pitching high. I'm just letting the ball go where the ball's going to go. You're going to have a series of grounders and things of that nature. Hopefully it's something up there, home plate again, mess up. Now, the importance of playing around with this, this mode and this method is you're going to get a lot of opportunities to get it. And with a lot of, a lot of opportunities to get it, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to learn how to throw the ball properly with the button accuracy mechanic. So I got it to the point where I would spend an hour and would get a couple of perfect throws. Uh, not necessarily throwing someone out, of course, but a couple of perfect throws to one out of three times I would be able to land on a perfect throw. So with practice, you can perfect it as well. You do not have to catch the ball for an out to properly throw someone out. They just have to be running home, and you have to catch them out with your uh, with your catcher. So again, it's rinse repeat of making sure the bases are loaded, and then just pitching fastballs so they pop it up. Like so, that's clearly foul. Fouls don't matter as long as your player doesn't catch it and waste an out for you because you cannot throw someone advancing on a foul ball. So again, practice, practice, practice. And again, if item doesn't look correct to you where you don't have the base loaded or if you have two outs, Feel free to fast forward however necessary. Here's a perfect throw. It lands right on the home plate. Throw it. Oh, so close. But you will say that was, without getting it, that is about as close as it's going to get. Uh, but, so the other that happens. So because I did catch the ball, it was out. I had two outs. I got to fast forward to the next inning. And immediately I will walk. The first three batters. Again, I'm losing 20 to 0. The score does not matter. When you get the throw, perfect home and, and catch the player out, the trophy will pop. Uh, there's maybe a second delay, but, but relatively it pops right away. So you do not have to wait till the end of the game. You do not have to be winning the game. You do not have to win the game. You do not have to do anything other than just make sure you successfully throw them out with a perfect throw. So keep practicing this, and you will be successful. So I'm going to speed it up until when I actually do it. Uh -oh, spoiler alert. But, uh, I'm going to just speed up the video. So as you can see, the score is just racking up with, with me walking players, 25, 27, 28, 20, 29, they're scoring a lot of runs, 30, doesn't really matter, who cares. Uh, but again, it's a lot of unsuccessful throws home. Here's where uh, I end up getting it. Now, my pitcher's getting tired, I don't care, as long as he can relatively pitch strike. So here's a fly ball in my outfield. Perfect on home, controller vibrates, I get excited. Throw home, he tags him, oh my gosh, he is actually out. So that was the trophy, it's as simple as that. Hours and hours of trying, you obviously can do it. I did it, so anyone can. But it's as simple as that, as long as you set it up right. So thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you have success in it too. Good luck.